Hey, 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 everyone. Anthony Fantano here, Internet's busiest music nerd. I hope you're doing well. I'm, I'm right here in the middle. I'm tiny. I'm tiny. And uh, it is music bracket season. It is March music bracket madness. We are going to kick that off this month in 2019 with a swans bracket, which is going to be a lot of fun. I do want to say really quickly before we get too deeply in the bracket, I am going on tour on the West Coast this May, uh, pretty much two months from now. It is uh, two months from now at this point. We are going to be kicking it off in Vancouver. And then we're going to be heading to Seattle, Portland, San Francisco, Los Angeles, San Diego. If you are interested in any of these dates or if you are in the area, link down below for more information and uh, you can grab tickets as well down there too. All right, let's get started on this thing. Some pretty decent choices in this list. Um, maybe not uh, all of my favorites from uh, some of the older records in the band's discography, but still, I think there are some great choices in this list. Um, I, I am maybe going to periodically be having to check back on album titles as I go through this list because I'm not super crazy about the color coordination system that uh, <laughs> shout out to the person who made this bracket though. Not super crazy about the color coordination system this person came up with as I don't think it's that intuitive and the band does have a lot of albums in their discography, but, uh, uh let's kick it off on the top left quadrant. We have two tracks over here, Power for Power and Saved. Power for Power is off of the band's uh, debut full-length album, Saved, is off of what many consider to be the most underwhelming and forgettable record in Swan's discography, uh, The Burning World, a lot of very droney and acoustic and somewhat uh, jangly uh, rock cuts on that album where the, the band is very obviously being influenced by a lot of alternative rock trends uh, around that time. Uh, they do come out with some good tracks on there, but honestly, I do prefer the uh, industrial noise rock and no wave vibes uh, coming off of their debut so much more. Plus, Power for Power is such a, a wonderfully crushing track. I cannot really um, uh, say enough good things about it. And what's interesting about a Swan's Bracket is that the band has so many different legs and segments of their discography, and I think, uh, depending on the listener, you're going to favor certain eras or albums. So um, I, I've made it no secret in the past what records in the band's discography that I favor the most and what eras are my favorite. All right, uh, after that, we do have Cop versus Final Sacrifice. Now, Cop is not a bad follow-up to Filth, but I do feel like after uh, a little bit that no-wave era of the band's career, they did kind of paint themselves into a corner. Now, I'm glad they evolved past this sound down the road, um, but in my opinion, Cop is is not nearly as, uh, as interesting a record as Filth. Um, I do like what the band ends up doing on Greed and Holy Money as they do kind of get a little bit more ambitious with their sound palettes and their song structures, and it's not quite as primal or as rudimentary, uh, but still, um, you know, having said that, it is up against a pretty essential track off of Soundtracks for the Blind, The Final Sacrifice, and honestly, given the... Um, uh, not only on this track, uh, the uh, wonderful, dense, and uh, lengthy, epic instrumentation and, uh, and song length, I, I do kind of favor uh, this track quite a bit. So uh, we're going we're gonna to go Final Sacrifice. All right, we do have uh, Love Will Save You, which is off of White Light from the Mouth of Infinity. Uh, not one of my favorite Swans records, but uh, still a very good album. And uh, that's up against uh, one of the best songs off of The Seer, in my opinion, uh, not only for its build and its progression, but also for the amazing group vocals on the track. I just had to go lunacy. Um, I just had to go lunacy, had to go lunacy. Uh, moving on from there, we do have a track from one of my favorite Swans records, period, and uh, that is Where Does a Body End off of The Great Annihilator, and uh, that is up against Real Love. That's, that's on Children of God. Okay, that's a Children of God cut. Uh, again, not super crazy about the color coordination system here, as it is. It looks very similar. Like if you look at real love, it looks very similar to the uh, the filth, you know, color coordination uh, over there. Just the the font is a little bit darker, a little bit more of a deep red. Uh, but uh, whatever, it's it. I digress. Um, so real love versus uh, where does a body end? I actually ended up favoring a where does a body end. Um, I actually, you know, when most great Annihilator tracks come up, uh, I'm really going to end up favoring them because I do 
think that is an amazing album. The production is great. I think the balance stylistically on the record is really fantastic, as there are some uh, very dynamic ballads on that album, but there are some very dark industrial atmospheres as well. It feels like from there, Swans took a lot from that sort of uh, more ballad-driven and acoustic era uh, that they had in the early 90s and the late 80s, and they sort of started fusing it once again with a lot of those more noisy and experimental sounds uh, that they were known for in the first leg of their career, and, and that's what makes uh, the great... Annihilator, in my opinion, uh, so fantastic. It's a marriage of of, uh, of both of those ideas and sounds, and, and also kind of pushed into something else beyond that, too. So uh, really uh, do enjoy that track quite a bit. Uh, moving on from there, we have Money is Flesh versus Animus uh, off of Soundtracks for the Blind. Money uh, is Flesh, if I remember correctly, based off of the Color coordination here is off of uh, uh, Greed, and uh, I ended up going with uh, with Animus. Uh, many tracks off of Soundtracks for the Blind are quite beautiful, and, and Animus is certainly a, uh, an example of that. All right, so now in the list, uh, we have our first track from the album that I gave a 10 out of 10, To Be Kind. We have Screenshot, the opening track to To Be Kind, and that is up against Mother of the World, which is uh, another track off of uh, off of The Seer. And uh, it should be no secret at this point that I do favor To Be Kind over The Seer, and I do love the uh, pulsating, driving groove of Screenshot. I love the mantra vocals. I love the exciting, uh, explosive atmosphere of the track quite a bit as well the dense instrumentation it is amazing uh, it's an amazing kickoff and start uh, to that album so I definitely uh, ended up going screenshot uh, right there and I updated that one and anima sorry about the uh, delay there all right moving on from there uh, we have another track from to be kind she loves us going up against a track from the glowing man a cloud of forgetting and honestly, I did end up going uh, with She Loves Us. Uh, it was a bit of a close call because Cloud of Forgetting is a pretty epic track, but uh, She Loves Us is an incredible song. It uh, you know does feature some very sticky guitars and vocals, uh, pretty catchy by swan standards in, in this point of their career anyway. Um, and uh, yeah, I just don't uh, think I have anything else to say about it other than that. You guys have heard me praise To Be Kind to Death. And uh, so I, it should be no surprise that we have a lot of To Be Kind songs here progressing. All right, so going back into the band's discography, we have this next couplet of songs over here. We have Sex, God, Sex, another track off of Children of God. And then we have Failure, which is also off of uh, White Light. And honestly, Failure as a ballad, I don't feel like is as uh, compelling as what we have on uh, on Sex, God, Sex. I love the, the three-part a sort of formula of that track. You have this very dark, despondent, building God part. You have the uh, almost like um, uh, euphoric sex passage in the middle of the song, and then it heads into even darker territory at the end. I just kind of love the progression of the track. I love the movement of the track. I love the mood that it uh, that it conjures up. A, a very deeply disturbing song in in a lot of ways, in my opinion. So I think what I'm going to do here is is actually just kind of like finish the top left quadrant and then move from there. Uh, so going power for power versus the final sacrifice actually went uh, power for power, as I do think that is a pretty amazing, crushing song. And while I do like the final sacrifice, I feel like that song exhibits a lot of ideas that Swans would later improve upon, whereas like on its own as a statement for noise rock and industrial rock, like Power for Power is still, and, and many songs off of Filth, uh, still stands as like one of the boldest and noisiest and, and most hard hitting, uh, you know, sort of for that style. So I, again, I ended up going to Power for Power. Um, as much as I do favor many tracks off of the Great Annihilator, I, I still went Lunacy from the Seer for the uh, next quadrant or the next sort of couplet of tracks right there because Lunacy is still uh, such an incredible song and I actually ended up going Lunacy again over Power for Power. Lunacy, Lunacy, the buildup of that track. I think actually as much as I do prefer, um, you know, Swan's next two records, I think Lunacy does go toe to toe with a lot of songs off of those two albums. All right, from there, I ended up going, of course, uh, Screenshot, and She Loves Us, and uh, beyond that, I ended up going with uh, She Loves Us, because I do think it is a bit more of a, a lengthy, more epic track uh, that has an amazing build-up. Screenshot, I do think uh, the riffs 
in comparison, uh, do get a bit redundant uh, as the song progresses, and I do think that uh, She Loves Us has, has a much better and a more uh, enthralling flow. And then between Lunacy and She Loves Us, I end up going with uh, She Loves Us. I do think it is the more dynamic track, the uh, uh, more amazing progression. I think, uh, you know, Lunacy being a bit more of an intro cut doesn't have quite the uh, amazing flow and, and build and everything that She Loves Us has, so I just pretty much ended up going... Uh, uh, with she loves us there, so there we go. That's uh, that's kind of that uh, top left bracket done. Uh, moving on from there, we uh, go back to the uh, soundtracks for the blind record, along with uh, white light, and uh, we have helpless child versus song for the sun. And uh, helpless child is actually uh, I don't know a pretty decent lengthy cut off of uh, off of soundtracks for the blind. Certainly a bit more compelling than a song for the sun in my opinion, so I ended up uh, going with a Helpless Child. You know, I, I do kind of tend to favor, I guess, the noisier tracks and the more epic tracks in the Swans discography. Uh, moving on from there, we have Children of God versus Half-Life. And uh, Half-Life I ended up going with because uh, it, it's... Look, Half-Life is an amazingly crushing song. Like, the mix on that track, the noise, the bass, the power... Like, th there's very little in the Swans discography, especially in the early portion of their career, um, that actually hits that hard. A uh, Little God in My Hands is a much more fun and groovy and memorable track than The Seer Returns, in my opinion. So uh, another track from The Seer that gets beat out by uh, a song from uh, uh, To Be Kind. Uh, all lined up, and Cloud of Unknowing, uh, as much as I do like soundtracks for the blind, I did end up going with Cloud of Unknowing, because, I mean, that is such a gargantuan track, uh, and such an amazing track, and the, the multiple phases of it are so incredible and uh, transcendent, um, that there, there's actually very little in the Swans discography uh, that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with it, in my opinion. Continuing this list, I do like that the creator of it did think to incorporate at least a few tracks off of the band's album Love of Life. Uh, we have Love of Life on here, we have Golden Boy, uh, we also have No Cure for the Lonely, but honestly, that that is, it is one of my least favorite Swans albums. It's not terrible by any means, but mostly just kind of feels a, uh, like a little derivative or just kind of like left over from a lot of the best ideas from White Light. Uh, so unfortunately, those tracks through this bracket do not fare all that well against the other songs uh, on here, especially when you're going up against uh, such a great track as the title track to the great Annihilator. Uh, moving on from there, as that is my choice, also we do have The Apostate, which is a very powerful cut off of The Seer, uh, completely crushing it over the <laughs> Burning World track. Uh, now Jim against Right Wrong, uh, which is a pretty monstrous cut off of Filth. Wrong! Right! Um, I did have to think about for a little bit because there are some cuts, and Jim is certainly one of them, that from uh, My Father Will Guide Me Up a Rope has grown on me a little bit. I think since Swan successfully expanded on a lot of the best sounds and ideas on that album uh, with their later records, I do look upon that album a bit more fondly than I did when I initially reviewed it. And I, I recall I gave it a six, uh, but I do uh, think I favor those tracks maybe a little bit more in retrospect than I did at the time when I reviewed the LP. But still, um, I don't really... <laughs> I don't really prefer that track, even though I did have a think about it. I, I didn't really end up preferring that track to uh, Right Wrong, so it did end up going to Right Wrong. But still, I, I, I had to think about it more than I probably would have uh, if I were sort of comparing those two records like in 2010, 2011. All right, moving on from there, uh, of course, as, as much as I do enjoy uh, many tracks off of uh, The Great Annihilator, uh, the title track of The Glowing Man with its gargantuan sound totally crushes uh, that cut, sadly, but, uh, but still, good song. And moving on from there, 
Of course, uh, what progresses between a little god in my hands and the cloud of unknowing is a little god in my hands. I do kind of like the uh, the immediacy of the vocals and the guitar parts on that record, the various phases. Even though it is a pretty long cut, uh, it stays engaging and is a bit of a edge of your seat thrill ride, in my opinion, as far as a lengthy tracks in the Swans discography go. Uh, the apostate uh, is what progresses past the title track of the great Annihilator in the next bracket, and then I picked the Glowing Man uh, over Right Wrong, and now in the lower left quadrant we have like a final four of some of the most epic and lengthy songs <laughs> in the Swans discography, so I mean I think uh, if anything is indicative of the type of sounds that I enjoy hearing from Swans, I, I think it's, it's definitely this. Uh, but progressing past these four, I did go with Helpless Child over A Little God in My Hands, actually. And I did go with The Glowing Man over The Apostate, as it is, it is a larger, more uh, mind-expanding track. And then I ended up going uh, with The Glowing Man in the final section of that bottom left quadrant. All right, moving to the top right, uh, we have Blind vs. Gang, which is an interesting kind of collection of tracks, as Gang isn't even close to one of the best songs on Filth, in my opinion. I think it really just could have been left off of this list entirely, and it's going up against what, in my opinion, is one of the best ballads off of White Light. Uh, so I ended up going with Blind. Uh, going between a hanging and song for a warrior, while I do think a song for a warrior is a very pretty, beautiful oasis of a track in the midst of the seer, of course sung by Karen O. Oh, shout out to her. I do think the hanging is a heavier, more harrowing, and a bolder, a more standalone song uh, than song for a warrior is a more of a fulfilling experience. You know, to me, uh, song for a warrior it's it's nice, but it's more of a transitional moment. You know what I mean? Uh, I understand why a lot of fans like it, and it's definitely essential to that record. But to me, I think uh, I, I think a hanging says a lot more about Swan's general sound um, than that track does, honestly. Uh, between I Was a Prisoner and Just a Little Boy, uh, as much as I do love To Be Kind, I actually ended up going with uh, I Was a Prisoner in Your Skull. Um, Just a Little Boy is great, but I do think it is one of the lengthier and slightly weaker tracks off of To Be Kind, and I Was a Prisoner is one of the weirdest and most enjoyable tracks off of Soundtracks for the Blind, one of the weirdest and most enjoyable tracks in the Swans discography, has a great instrumental first leg, and then eventually progresses into uh, that very strange tape recorder vocal bit that many Swans fans know, uh, won't talk about how you're fucked up. It's uh, pretty incredible and uh, still stands out to me today as one of the more ear-grabbing moments in, in the Swans discog, as odd and as out there as it is. Uh, moving on from there, we have Blind Love versus No Words and No Thoughts, and I actually ended up going with a No Words and No Thoughts. I do think that is a pretty powerful track off of uh, Rope. Moving on from there, I ended up going with a Finally Peace over Mind, Body, Light and sound. Uh, the text is a bit smudgy there for me. I apologize. From the Great Annihilator, I do think finally "Peace" is a pretty incredible finishing uh, track for uh, the Glowing Man, and uh, I think it has a very uh, kind of triumphant, epic sound, uh, very uh, peaceful, and uh, uh, I don't know, positive sound for Swans. You know, feels like a beautiful moment of closure from a very winding, heavy, and um, you know, transcendent album. Uh, moving on from there, I ended up going with uh, Killing for Company over with Empathy from Soundtracks for the Blind. It just kind of seems like a mo more coherent and uh, memorable song. Moving on from there, we have uh, Stay Here versus The Golden Boy. Of course, uh, Stay Here kills it and progresses forward. And of course, Oxygen completely snuffs out YRP, another track from uh, Soundtracks for the Blind, that, that is, is not even one of the strongest songs on there, in my opinion. So uh, Oxygen moving forward is kind of really a you know, no-brainer progression, in my opinion. Also a no-brainer is, once again, Blind progressing forward, as uh, it is a really great ballad. I think it's a superior track to uh, a Hanging, frankly. Um, let's, yeah, moving that forward. And, uh, I was a prisoner versus no words and no thoughts. I actually put it on, uh, I was a prisoner, 
Uh, Blind ended up beating that out, so that moved on to the next bracket for me. Uh, Finally, Peace versus uh, Killing for Company. I ended up going with uh, uh, Killing for Company because I do think that is a pretty strong track, and uh, I think it's a better standalone track. I do think, uh, uh, again, it sort of inhabits an interesting portion and uh, an interesting point in Swan's discography where you do have those ballad and those industrial elements coming together really creatively. Um, You know, whereas finally piece, it seems like, you know, more of a nice top off, but um, uh, you know, not, not much more uh, than that. And uh, oxygen progresses forward from there. Oxygen, of course, beat that track out into the next section and ended up going toe to toe with blind and uh, yeah, I just kind of ended up going with oxygen again, as I do find it to be the more exhilarating, more more exhilarating track. And uh, if we're to finish the top section over here, I actually ended up going with oxygen over "She Loves Us." I, I do prefer, even though it is still a lengthy song, a lengthy epic song. I do kind of prefer the hard hitting uh, immediacy of that track, the grooves of that track, and Michael Jira's vocal performances on that song are incredible. Uh, you know, really some of the best he's ever laid down in his entire discography, but, uh, I guess I'll, uh, praise it more after this, uh, moving on from there. I ended up going with a bring the sun over fool as that is a pretty gargantuan and very gratifying song uh, with multiple phases. And uh, I do love the historical element of that track quite a bit as, as ferocious as, uh, as fool is, uh, in some respects. Uh, moving on from there, I ended up going with I Am The Sun over How They Suffer. I Am The Sun is easily one of the catchiest tracks off The Great Annihilator. I think one of the catchiest tracks in that era of Swan's discography, Michael Jira's call and response vocals uh, with what sounds like you know either layered female vocals or even like a children's chorus or something. I'm not entirely sure, but it is a, a very heavy, very sinister. I am the sun. I do love kind of the pulsating and very heavy hitting kind of progression of uh, that track quite a bit. It's very dark. Uh, moving on from there, I ended up going with a beautiful child over when will I return, honestly, which might be a little bit of a surprise for uh, people who know me to love the glowing man, but that is just what, what I was feeling at the time. All right, of course, The Seer ends up beating out another uh, Love of Life track, the title track to The Seer. I see it all, I see it all, I see it all. There's, there's really kind of no contest there. Um, of course, I did To Be Kind over Volcano as as uh, weird and as odd as a track as Volcano is with the dance music elements, with Jarbo's vocals, with uh, some of the freakiest lyrics of any song off of the Swans record, period. Um, uh, it's it's probably, uh, uh, I guess, uh, uh, you know, surprising that I wouldn't pick that track, even though I do enjoy its oddity, but uh, to be kind is is a pretty incredible finisher, and um, I do think uh, wraps the sentiment of that album up uh, quite well. Uh, of course, I ended up going with a uh, Frankie M over Coward. I think the uh, uh, the lyrics on Frankie M are sweetly disturbing. The progression of the track is incredible, and um, uh, I'm not sure what else I can say about it beyond that. Uh, moving forward from there, uh, I ended up picking a Why Are We Still Alive over New Mind, which is a bit of a no-brainer because Why Are We Still Alive is is easily the better uh, in, uh, track in terms of just pure songwriting. Uh, also the case with the sound over 93 uh, Av B Blues, which um, you know is, is really just kind of a uh, it's nice, but it's it's another kind of just transitional moment for me personally on the Seer. Um, so, uh, of course, you know, the sound is going to sort of move forward past that. Uh, Why Are We Still Alive uh, ended up progressing past that. We have, a, you know, more songs or at least a couple of songs from uh, uh, White Light doing better, you know, on the right side of the bracket uh, than on the left side of the bracket. And I, I do genuinely think it is because these are the better tunes. Uh, ended up going with Frankie M over To Be Kind. Uh, as I do think um, lyrically it is a bit more hard-hitting, and I do think the progression of the song and kind of the evil, sinister qualities of it um, are a bit more uh, exhilarating and uh, and thrilling. Uh, Moving on from there, I ended up going with I Am The Sun 
over Bring the Sun, because I legitimately do think it is that catchy of a track, The Seer, the title track to the album, beats out uh, Beautiful Child, and uh, once more, um, I Am the Sun uh, ended up winning uh, over The Seer. So I Am the Sun carried it all the way through for me. I do think it is legitimately that great of a song, and it is a very fantastic starter uh, for anybody who's looking to get into The Great Annihilator, which uh, if I haven't said it already again, I do think is is one of the easier records uh, to get into, you know, for a new Swans fan, as it is not that lengthy or demanding of a listen. It does, uh, you know, feature some of those industrial elements. It does feature some of those noise and some of those ballad elements. It's a good mix of everything without going too deep into any one direction. Um, and just comes through with, with great material, you know, front to back. Uh, ended up picking... Uh, Why Are We Still Alive over Frankie M, as it is a pretty incredible ballad, um, you know, almost as good as Blind, in my opinion, uh, which is why it did carry us so far. And uh, then I gave it to I Am The Sun over Why Are We Still Alive. And then when it came down to I Am The Sun versus The Glowing Man, The, the Glowing Man is just really more of a an experience, you know, than just kind of a song. Like I Am The Sun is a very good song. You know, I think it's a very good track. Um, but in my opinion, the glowing man is really just like kind of a, you know, a a brain changer. You know, you listen to that track, you get into that track, you let it envelop you. Uh, your, your brain chemistry is forever different. (laughs) Uh, so it, it, it literally came down to the glowing man versus oxygen. You know, two of my favorite tracks off of, uh, the two swans records that on my YouTube channel I have praised the most. So I, I guess that should be no surprise to anybody. Uh, the, the point that we have reached at this moment in time. And, uh, you know, as, as epic as The Glowing Man is, I did end up picking Oxygen for my number one pick on the bracket over here. Uh, once again, because I do think it is a hard-hitting track. It is a crushing track. Vocals are incredible. Performance is tight and fantastic. Uh, Michael Jira, again, some of his best vocals across the band's entire discography. Uh, the track is a good mix of of that immediacy, that hard-hitting attitude, uh, that explosivity uh, that To Be Kind is so great at delivering, along with, you know, lengthier, more dynamic tracks. Uh, all of that plus, um, you know, the, the, the length, the linear groove and direction, um, you know, that sort of like epic repetitive, uh, you know, brain changing quality about, uh, some of the best tracks off of, uh, to be kind uh, that, that they have, that they bring to the table. Uh, so that is essentially my bracket over here. Thank all of you for watching. Uh, hopefully you got, uh, you know, something out of this video, you know, maybe you're even ranting down in the comments right now, like, how could you pick this track over this other track? I hate you. I, I wish you, uh, we're dead. Uh, and you know, I'll, I'll take that in stride. I'll take it in stride. Uh, love you, love you, love you. Over here next to my head is another bracket video that you can check out and, uh, you can watch that or, uh, you can hit up the links to subscribe to our channel and, uh, we'll catch you in the next video. Okay, cool. Anthony Fantano, Swan's Madness, forever.